Hi everybody, I'm happy to introduce to you the OP set, the brand new multimedia synthesizer of Teenage Engineering, a device which is not bigger than a TV remote, just compare it to a cell phone, and uh, is still a complete audio workstation. It's having no display, which is in my opinion not a big problem as Teenage Engineering was able to give on every sub menu a feedback with the colors so after a while you know which color means which function and also the level setting which you see like when the when the led is heavily lit then it's a maximum volume and if there's no light it's a zero so it's quite easy to see all the parameters basically it's a 16 track sequencer eight of the tracks are audio tracks internal audio tracks so for sample based ones and for um, software engines like physical mod modeling uh, synthesizers like on the op1 a little bit then there is two um, channels for effects so let's say two sub channels you also have two subgroups in the mix then there is tape effects there is a master transpose track which you can automate like all the other tracks there is a punch in track which reminds a bit of the pocket operator type of punch in which you can put into each separate track and there is a external midi track which is here or controlling all kind of parameters on other devices through the USB C or the possible um, extra modules which are different kind of outputs which are not included in the basic OP set and there is a DMX channel and a animation channel. Right now I'm not talking about the app and you must know that this device is a beta device and it's not the final version of the OP set so what I can tell right now is basically functions of this beta device. Also there's an app for iPhone and iPads which you connect via Bluetooth to the OP set. So you have then a classical display, but I would recommend that you teach yourself this device without this um, screen because uh, then you know it out of the pocket. And that's the idea of this device. You can quite intuitively work with it. Having a quick in introduction of all the functionality we have here the mini stereo jack output which you can also use with headphones we have USB-C with which you can transfer your audio data like your software banks uh, your sample banks you can use OP1 format sample banks and transfer it to some um, of these four tracks here each of them of those sample tracks is having 10 banks, the same like the software um, synthesizers, these um, 10 banks can be filled, not only according to bass drum, snare drum, hi-hat, you can put whatever you want and then automate this and sequence it. You have here on the back side P for pattern and project. With this button you can organize first of all your 10 pattern pattern banks meaning 10 pattern banks with each 16 patterns makes a total of 160 patterns you have um, with this um, pattern button all the functionality to copy tracks to copy patterns to make song structures and with the next button it's the mixer button you have a direct possibility to mix sub mix all the sample based and all the software engine based tracks you have a uh, compressor and you have a master output on the red dial you also can when you press the mixer button do mute groups mute groups are on the decimal keys if you look at the keyboard to explain it quickly it's two octaves and the black keys are the decimal numbers from 1 to 10 so basically when you start putting here mute groups so for example like switching off those two tracks then it's in this case stored already on button 6 if you press 5 you have some other mute groups and you can with the shift button go into a mode where you can define that it's in 
not played inside with the software engines or the sample engine that it's played only through MIDI so you have also possibilities to decide which is an internal track and what's an external track. With the next button metronome you can set up like the basic speed uh, let me find like an empty pattern I go with pattern to bank number nine there's not so many patterns used and I take this pattern so now let's set up a metronome with the speed we have with this dial we can put in the speed also decimal you get a feedback about the speed by the numbers which shows 114 so you know it's 114 you also can click it in so and you have on after the green dial the blue dial is for the um, for the swing and the yellow dial is for the sound itself of the click track and the red for the loudness I started so the volume you set with this the type of click here and then you can basically start directly recording to select a track you always press the track button and then you select one of these 16 tracks now we want to start with a kick drum we can select one of these sample banks and take for example this kick drum there is many ways to record it first of all you can just press in the buttons for those steps which should have the kick so now we can switch off already our metronome next is a snare drum we select it with track and snare drum and go into record mode and play it live now I did a mistake and um, it's on the one basically it should be four steps further this is no problem with the machine I press track and I push the snare to the step where I need it I could have also just pressed it away but this is a simple way the quantization I can do with track and the yellow dial all the other dials in this function define with a green one the note length which is a default note length when I just click in the notes with a second button I can de define if it's re-triggered gate or loop this is only for the sample ones on the software engines it's a different setting here as I showed you have qu quantization from 0 to 100% and with the red one you can define a portamento effect so next uh, we record a hi-hat and this hi-hat we want to record step by step another mode so we have a look which bank we use we take bank number one have here a closed hi-hat here open one and now we can just press and hold the record button and have recorded um, all the tracks if I missed one I just hold the rec record button and can then switch with plus minus through the sounds through the steps and just then set my step I can set um, individual um, volume for each step the OP set is of course velocity sensitive but I can set it manually if I just press the step and then with the pitch bender which is down here I can make it more silent or loud to the left it becomes more silent If I realize that 16 steps is not enough, I press track and shift and can then decide how many times I multiply for this pattern to make it longer. I now go to a bass track and use this sound and decide that I have not only 16 tracks, as uh, 16 steps, I want to have uh, 32 steps. So I press track and shift and multiply it with two. 
if I want to have um, polyrhythms or different kind of signatures, for example, uh, three quarters rhythm or waltz, then I can define to use not 16 steps, only using, for example, 12 steps. But we stay here with our uh, 32 right now and play some bass, record it in. And of course we first quantize it. And we realize, okay, we make this pattern again short, no problem. We only use eight steps of the 16. For example, this step we wanna have longer now. So we press it and then we can decide the length by pressing it, making it further long. So we see a blue light and the purple light, which is blinking, shows us the position, how I played my sound. So I can with minus or plus align it better to the grid. And now the sound is longer. There we are directly into the next function. I show you the functionality of the synthesizer. Uh, it's various engines installed on the machine. I can configure this myself. All these engines have four levels and these four levels have each four parameters. I can step them through with a shift button and I instantly see the color change. And I know after a while white means the first channel, which is parameter one, parameter two of the synth engine. Then I have a filter, low pass and high pass and a resonance. Then I have on the green one, it's the number two. Um, I have a attack, decay, sustain, release. On the next one, I have my LFO deciding on the green encoder, on the green dial, uh, my depth. On the blue one, I have the rate. On the yellow one, the destination. It's interesting to see how I can see the different destinations. Uh, parameter one is green. When it gets like this blue, it's parameter two, or let's say this pink. When it gets this yellow, it is filter. When it's red, it's resonant. When it's again blue, it's pen. And finally, when it's white, it's volume as destination. And the final dial is for the shape of my LFO, which is starting as a typical triangle, going through a kind of sinus-like on the middle. And at the end, it's a pulse. The pulse and the sinus are both synced to the pre pressure of the key, um, of the start of the key, and um, the, um, from the triangle to the sinus, it is uh, a free run LFO. On the final level, it's the yellow one. I have all the settings for the mixer. And the mixer setting consists of FX1, so the send for FX1, FX send 2, panning, of the sound and finally the level on the mixer. So as I said before, we wanna set up some parameter locks. So for example, we change the sound of the first, make it more sharp. And change here, make it more filtered. up and this sound we put for example into a delay and this is our typical parameter log which is of course for each channel separately we come to the next function which is um, our um, push-in effects, we have them on each channel separately. We try first 
the bass drum we get into the push effects with shift and then the white keys and the black keys pitch effect loop ramp echo and many other when I record those effects I go to record then I can edit them on the punch in channel which is here and I see them instantly I can of course now these events also quantize push them all direction can define the length of it or just erase it basically I erase every track simply with track and stop button there's a little bit difference between these channels this is an arpeggiator on the arpeggiator page There is a little change, there is no LFO, the LFO is then the settings, it changes also the color, it's blue. We have then the settings speed on the green dial. On the blue manual, up, down and so on, random finally, different styles and finally on the red one, the range of octaves. Recording is the same like all channels. We come to a most interesting part of the sequence that's called the step components. We can for each step define to integrate, for example, furthermore steps or to change onto certain um, destinations, for example, putting filters, putting different pitches for steps or decide how often something gets played. For example, if we go to the snare drum and we want to have some kind of fill in or two times, we press them in, normally it would sound like this. Now comes constantly the snare. I want it only to come all two times, so I press shift, select these steps, they start to blink green. And now I can, for example, say, just play them all two times. And now it doesn't happen. As a next feature, I want to introduce to you the effects. We have two effect channels and we can fully automate them. First of all, we decide a track, we want to put some effect. I think we take the arpeggiator and it's on uh, parameter page number four. It's number four, here it's the yellow one and it's on the first style. You can instantly have a listen to it. We select the effect channel by track and effect channel 1 and 2, the same is of course for 2. Then we can decide what kind of effect we want to use. We have at the moment installed four different effects, in future there's many others. And we can also define to which bank we want to put which effect. Right now there's on number 1 a delay, the parameters I can change hereby. I have a filter for each effect of course. resonance and of course I can also rhythm rhythmically program the effect by by notes having here like full length and here the how it's broken into 16th 48th or 64th notes and all this I can of course automate by recording record uh, by pressing record I can erase it in a normal way. We check out the other effect bands. We have a number two, a reverb. A number three, a distortion.
check in filter. And number four, we have a bit crusher. And of course, the same settings for number two. The next interesting um, feature of the op OP set I want to introduce you, it's the tape effects. There was told a lot about this effect and basically it's some kind of sampler who constantly samples the pattern what we are playing and then puts it into short pieces into short samples and we can decide which sample we want to loop and which how long the sample should be and also the pitch and um, the filter of this. So let's have our track running and we go to tape effects. That's the first step next step and so on so we can walk through our whole pattern and of course we can also automate this and we have here a tune a coarse tune and the fine tune and of course filter Really interesting effect you can do a lot of things with that what's great about it you can also decide which tracks will be affected by the by the looper so I press shift and I see instantly which effects are uh, which tracks are affected I take out for example the drums and use it only on the melodic sounds Yeah, well, the bass drum was still in, so we take it also out. And as I said, we can automate this. So far the tape looper. I showed you already the features of the um, punch-in effects. We can also record the punch-in effects on the main page for the punch-in effects, but then it's the first octave is affecting into the submix one. The second octave is is uh, affecting into submix two, so into the um, synth engines. Oh, there was still our tape loop. I will raise it. And we go back to our punch in effect. So this octave is exactly the same like this octave. This is only affecting into the drum channels. And this is affecting into the keyboard channels. Here's a mute button, here's a mute button. And of course through this channel I can also edit our settings for the punch in effects which were separately put it into each track. Finally the automation for the Unity 3D animations is something which only works together with an iPhone and with the app, iPhone or iPad. This I don't demonstrate right now to you. There are still a lot of changes coming, but it's a fascinating tool so far. I checked it out on that beta device. It is stable and it is awesome. You can with the Photomatic, for example, also integrate your camera streams so you can let the public be a part of your musical performance. So it is not a lie to say this is a machine, a complete workstation, a quite intuitive workstation with which you can from the scratch write songs and make them like a performance, meaning you just go in front of your crowd and you start writing your song with them together and it goes up and up and finally you have a song. It's amazing machine with 
great sound capabilities, interesting engines, and of course the opportunity to use sample banks from the OP1. So when it comes to that, I have to say, this is the perfect machine to be out and wherever you are writing your songs or being on stage. Also, of course, you can connect all kind of MIDI devices and controllers. For example, if you want to have a keyboard for it, I use here this keyboard, for example. I can easily plug it in with the right adapter into the USB. And then you can play it. So far, so good. This is the OP set and I'm happy that I could show you some of its features. Of course, as soon as it is released, I will show much more of the deep insights and also the app and all the new functions which will be added. So that's it about uh, the OP set. Let's say about the current OP set in the beta state. There's a lot to be added and um, I'm sure there comes fascinating new engines, fascinating new opportunities with effects and with third party packs which you can install into the machine and also of course the modules so far I have not told about it right now I have one module in the OP set which is um, gate and CV and uh, also a trigger or MIDI in out and a pocket operator trigger trigger signal so you can also integrate your pocket operators it's working extremely stable it's also working stable as a master into your recording setup. I tried it with uh, several systems like um, Akai MPC Live, but also syncing my Cubase and it's all quite stable running. So amazing device, which can be in the center of your setup. Also with other synthesizers, however you address them, if you address them with USB or with classical MIDI, it works on all levels. You can do your parameter logs to all of your synthesizers which are able to work with this so it's a great tool and uh, I can recommend you to get this little device some people might yeah, neck around that it's too expensive yes if you judge a book by its cover it might be so it's really small it looks like a remote but it's the book and the inside is an amazing complete workstation. So just give it a try. Um, from the moment you put your hands on this device, you're addicted to it, so no way out. So you have to get it. Um, I cannot tell you anything about the release date at the moment. We're all looking forward that it soon comes out because I'm sure that a lot of people like Cuckoo and other YouTube um, gear heads will definitely introduce this machine with all features and of course I will also do so. So I would be happy if you follow my channel or if you just give me a like button and uh, yeah that's so far about the OP set. All the best!